When you hear speedrun, what do you think of? Maybe it's beating a hundred plus hour game in mere minutes, or bugs that can drop that down to seconds? Maybe it's glitchless runs that still somehow beat those games in under an hour? Well, that's what I think of at least. A game that I had spent dozens of hours in, beaten in minutes. I had always wanted to do a speedrun, but I wanted it to be special. A long time ago, I was going to be a croc legend of the Gobo speedrunner, but, uh, well, that requires being good at the game. But then it hit me. Do a speedrun of Final Fantasy XIV. It can't be that bad, right? And okay, that run says 22 hours. Great. Originally, I had planned on doing a 24-hour stream for July 4th, my birthday. I wanted to do something fun, see how much of the game I could do, but a few of the members of the Discord egged me on, and I decided to give in and finally do a speedrun. And so, here we are. The Final Fantasy XIV MSQ% percent A Realm Reborn Road to 80. Ugh, that's a long name. But first, let's talk about the official rules for the speedrun in case you want to try it after. No delivery moogle, no FC or FC buffs, no market board or trading, no pre-made parties unless you're all doing the speedrun and submitting a run together, no pre-order or recruit a friend bonuses, and for single segment, you can't stop the timer until the run is over. If I'm slow, that means over 20 hours of continuous Final Fantasy XIV. No breaks, just run. The timer ends after you finish the main scenario quest before the dawn, the very last quest of 2.55, and the final quest of the entire expansion. Starting with character creation, this time around, chat forced me to play a Lalafell, but technically, that's also the most optimal character you you can make. The best class you can pick for a speedrun is Conjurer. It's the only healer you can start the game as, and because healers are always needed for dungeons, we get into dungeons and trials more consistently and faster than other classes. Since we're starting Conjurer, the best character we can make is a Dune's Folk Lalafell, as it has the highest base mind at 23, the most important stat for healers. Realistically, a normal player is never going to care about that tiny one or two stat point difference, but for us, since we're only playing the first expansion and staying around level 50, the one or two mind bonus will make a big difference, especially for the low-level dungeons. Kinda looks like he has a frog in his mouth. Alright, that's a good one. He doesn't have to see, he just has to be fast. That's all that matters. Please remove mustache. No, it, no, come on, the mustache is perfect. The timer will start as soon as I skip the first cutscene after creating a new character. We make our character on Seraph, a world on the Dynamis data center. Dynamis is notorious for long queue times, but it gets us the road to 80 buff, which doubles all of our experience gains and another incredibly important item for later in the run. With chat deciding on the name Aerodynamis, it's time to get things started. Before loading in though, I had a secret plan. If we had a login queue, I would cancel my login and swap data centers for my character before the run started so we would get all of the bonuses from being on Dynamis and better queue times for dungeons. But the game had other ideas. Before we could visit another data center, we had to do the first few quests so our travel time would have to be during the run. Alright, I didn't know about that one. That's tragic. My evil plan has been foiled, so we just gotta start. I'm going to skip this cutscene. As soon as I hit this button, the speed run starts and I'm gonna start panicking for a while. I did not study the route for this. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. It's gonna be a frantic yeah. scramble for half of it. Good luck. <laughs> The speedrun begins, gamers. The skip cutscene has been done. We start with the city questline and hit our first small problem. Out of the three starting cities, I've never once done Gridania's questline, only Ulda and Limsis. So I was going to have to learn where the quests went on the spot. This is also when one of the two biggest heroes of the run came into chat. Bunper, definitely not current world record holder for this category, hands us a major piece of advice. That important item from Dynamis I mentioned before was Silver Chocobo Feathers, which we could trade for level 50 Ironworks gear at a merchant in Gridania. But I was a bit too focused on finding the quests for now, so we'll grab it later. We tune to some Aetherites and grab the first Conjurer quest. There are seven Conjurer quests we have to do during the run to unlock White Mage, and two White Mage quests before I can get the most important early level spell, Regen. You could do an extra three White Mage quests for Holy, an AoE stun, but all three quests are out of the way and end up losing more time than they're worth. We take down some squirrels, ladybugs, and funguars, and get back to the MSQ. The level 5 quest requires an eye level 5 helmet, so we grab one from the nearby merchant. What's the mark for the end of A Realm Reborn? It is the end of 2.55. You can see the quest name, actually, at the very bottom of the live split, is Before the Dawn. I feel like the solo duties are going to be the biggest time loss for Conjurer, but the queue time just is gonna make up for it so much. We take down a clay golem while I fix up my keybinds, teleport back to Gridania, grab our level 50 gear from the Calamity Salvager, turn in our Conjurer quest, fight off a masked man and his pet gargoyle, become the spokesperson for the entire city, and finish the airship quest for our first split. Just over one hour to do the Gridania questline. Is that good? Couldn't tell you, but man, does it feel amazing. 
From here on, things are left up to the whims of fate. All future splits are dungeons or trials with random other players. I had to convince every party I was with to move fast through each dungeon and hope I got into them quickly. For now though, it was still early in the day, so I wasn't too worried about finding people. Five minutes later, we've unlocked the first dungeon, Sastasha. You're gonna have to be dragged along with me, I apologize, Mr. Warrior Main, but I promise it's for your own good. Dragging these poor sprouts through the dungeon, we take down the first boss pretty quickly, but then my hubris from how well the start went caught up with me, leading to a full party wipe and wasting about a minute. This is also a good chance to say that I don't play healer. I've never been good at it, so for most dungeons, I was going to be my own worst enemy. Second boss down, two more to go. Oh, this guy knows, dude. He brought him over to the dogs. He knows. He's getting it. And with Captain Madison defeated once again, we're on to the final boss. Right before we got there, the second hero of our run came into chat. Hab, another incredible speedrunner, third place for the category. With no other issues popping up, Den goes down and our first dungeon is complete. Straight back on the MSQ, Hab gives us the route for doing our conjurer quests. Recommend doing it before Hawk? Okay. Originally, I was planning on doing all of them at once as soon as I finished Sylph Management. If you didn't know, you can't upgrade any classes to their superior version until that main scenario quest is finished. Hab pushed us in a better direction though. As we unlock Temtara Deepcroft, we get a glimpse at just how crazy the speedrun can get. For White Mage, especially when you do solo, your class quests are right next to the main scenario most of the time. Really? While we queue in for Temtara, we start on the level 5 Conjurer quest. Once this quest is done, the next three will be right next to the MSQ as we progress. And just as soon as we finish killing the Tainted Earth Sprite, our queue pops. Temtara was, by far, the best dungeon luck we had for the entire day. Our warrior was on a mission. Maybe they were trying to do their daily roulette while cooking dinner, maybe they were just ready to roll as soon as I said they can do big pulls in chat, but they were a monster. This is gonna be crazy. While they were charging through, chat reminded me to do my Sestasha split. One hour and 37 minutes, a bit late, but eh, we'd stabilize as long as I remembered to do the next one. I don't think I have the stats to keep up the healing for it. <laughs> Good luck, gamers. <laughs> we're keeping them alive with two <laughs> This warrior was on a whole other level. They knew exactly how many mobs they could pull, mitigations to use, it was an amazing time save, and really pushed my little conjurer heels to the limit. And they didn't stop there, as the next group of mobs went down just as quickly. It was going so well that the speedrunners in chat were getting jealous. Kinda envious of this party? Yeah, no, this is ridiculously lucky. After making quick work of the rest of the dungeon, we hit the final boss in the blink of an eye. Ending things off with an LB, Tamtara took 8 minutes and 12 seconds, which is only 7 seconds behind 3rd place for the dungeon synced speedrun category. What an incredible run. And just as quickly as they arrived, they were gone. One of the best tanks Aerodynamus would ever meet. Equipping our new dungeon gear, we finished the Conjurer quest from earlier. Oh my god, I did forgot the split. I'm so bad. This. Grab the level 10 quest for later and continue on towards Copper Belt. Would using duty support be slower? The duty support would likely be slower because with this queue time with normal players, if a normal player has level 80 gear, they're queued into their daily roulette and they end up getting my Sestasha run, they'll be absolutely stat capped with sub stats and with main stats compared to the duty support, which will have uh, the actual dungeon level of stats. Oh, and also they use single target. That's a that's another good point. To get there, we use the Chocobo Porter, which can bring us over to Horizon, even though we've never been there before. This early in the game, before we get our own mount, Chocobo Porters are a huge boost of speed and a welcome chance to stand up and do some stretching. The Blood Clot speedrun? Yeah, no, that's, I would like to avoid specifically that, so it is time to stretch, gamers. This is also a good time to mention that this little guy, Aerodynamus, is actually powered by an unknown energy called, uh, like and subscribes. A short walk from Horizon, we're on to the next dungeon, Copper Bell Mines. Hello. Excuse me. DPS? Could you maybe hit the button? You don't know what this is doing? The time loss of the century to this DPS not hitting the button. <laughs> oh, there we go. Fantastic. Hope I remember to split at the end. Thank you for the reminder, Blue. I will definitely remember now. Copper Bell is a lot of interacting with doors and waiting, so to save a few seconds in this day-long speedrun, I had to be primed and ready to do any interactions as soon as they appear. Our tank this time knew their way around Copper Bell and ran past all of the mobs that would leave if you ran far enough. In my big brain plan, I was going to put them all to sleep and then we could just run away, and then I remembered that these are other human beings that are going to hit the mobs unless I actually speak the words to them. Greetings, how's the world record going? I think we're off pace for the world record by about eight hours at the moment, so we'll have to see. After taking down one of those fruit cup jellies I loved as a kid, we're on to the final boss. If I could do this pull as solo only, I can do this pull as a healer for another tank. Make up time in the sky like a pilot. 
how how do pilots make up time in the sky? I would love to know that actually. Because sometimes it's, you know, we're meant to be delayed by an hour and then they somehow pull in early. Like, how do you make up time in the sky? Are you not already going as fast as possible? And with Gygus down, Copperbell Mine is clear. Split time, I forgot again. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. The next quest is the first time in the story where we head to the Waking Sands. After this, we'll have an item that brings us to Vesper Bay, but for now, it was going to be a long walk from Horizons if this wasn't a speedrun. To get there faster, instead of heading to Horizons, we teleport to Limsa, grab some gear upgrades from Iron Thunder, and run down to the docks to take the ferry to Vesper Bay. And so, we enter the Waking Sands for the very first time. The next quest takes us to Eastern Thanalan, which is far away from any Aetherites I had gotten, so we make use of the other function for Chocobo Porters. Rather than taking the automatic rides to specific areas, you can rent a chocobo, which is basically getting him out for 10 minutes or until you get off of it. You can only rent a chocobo from main cities though, so we had to run past the black brush aetherite for now. One short chocobo ride later, we've made it to Camp Drybone. Quest and Drybone finished, we're back to Minfilia to learn how to meld, fight off a horde of Amalja, and queue in for the first trial of the run, the Bowl of Embers. And just as quickly as the fight starts, Ifrit is defeated. Lit, thank you. <laughs> Two hours and 40 minutes, and moments away from getting our very own chocobo. Is Rath saying... Machinist, Machinist? Yes, I'm saying it, Machinist, because that is the way to pronounce it. I refuse to believe otherwise. No one will ever convince me that Machinist is incorrect. Choosing to join the Twin Adders for the first time in my life, we rent a chocobo for the last time, progress our Conjurer questline, pick down some Garleans, grab the next class quest, join the Twin Adders, and unlock our first mount, the Chocobo Speedster. Okay, listen. Don't, don't hate me for this. I was very young. I, I made, <laughs> I made some wrong choices, okay? I was so impatient waiting on food to cook in the toaster or heating things up in the microwave that I would just eat the beef patties <laughs> while they were still frozen. I would take two of them up with me. I would put one in the toaster so that it could cook and it could be a, a, a warmed beef patty. And the other one I would just eat while it was still frozen, while I was waiting for the next patty. Yo, what do you mean explains a lot? No, 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 it wasn't raw. It was still cooked. Like, they were just, they, they were ready to eat frozen. And then my sister saw me doing it once, and she was like, What are you doing? Don't ever do that. Okay, I guess you're not supposed to eat frozen food frozen. Fine. I see how it is. Oh, thank you. It was very, very kind of you. I have a snack. Did I get my beefsicle? It's not- it's not frozen, okay? It was microwaved. All right, fine. I'll admit, when I was putting one in for breakfast, I was like, I wonder what it tasted like. And I almost just ate it frozen just to see. But no, I held myself back. Another Conjurer quest down, we've hit a point in the MSQ where we have to use emotes on NPCs. For most, especially the dance emotes, we've got a long animation to play out before we can move on. Though there is a trick that lets you skip the animation, but I don't figure that out until this quest is already finished. I'm going into this expecting that I'm gonna get something like a 20 hour for my first run. If I get something below that, I will be more than happy. Done with the sylphs, we get our first mount speed increase. Now, our little speedster will get us around faster in most of the lower level areas. We take out some sprites for the level 20 conjurer quest, ride a ferry to Aleport, get an incredibly lucky time save from a fate that counts for my MSQ, save like two minutes of travel and it's a world boss that only spawns once every 48 hours? Ooh, okay, so we got really lucky. And finally, just around an hour and 10 minutes after beating Ifrit, we make it to the next dungeon. With the longest split time so far, I was rushing through the dungeon and hoping our tank would catch up and save my life. It was a risk, but if they didn't hate me for it and leave me to die, it would be an incredible start. Thankfully, they were benevolent enough to let me live, and it seemed like they were down to race through the rest of the dungeon with me. The first boss was down in under two minutes, and the second boss in four minutes. We were on an amazing pace with an incredible team, until, of course, my lack of healing experience got the better of me. I didn't get there fast enough. No. Two deaths on this pole meant we'd be doing much less DPS to the final boss, so what seemed like a time save would likely ended up being slower than normal. Thankfully, Graphius is an easy boss that we can deal extra damage to after breaking its tail, so we finished Thousand Maws in 7 minutes and 17 seconds, which is probably an okay time- Oh my god, that's world record. I didn't even check this until I was editing the video. That's 30 seconds faster than world record. What the heck? Okay, but what if there was someone in here that was watching the stream? I would probably have to swap it, and so instead of just being synced 
it would be synced co-op and still second place. Oh my god. Completely ignorant to the fact I had just had the second fastest recorded Total Rock run in the world. The split reminder comes in from chat. Three hours and 58 minutes. Now we're back to Gridania for another quest turn. We've got another long stretch of MSQ before reaching Hawk Manor. 24 quests total, but we also pick up two mount speed increases to go along with. After reaching the quest for our next dungeon, rather than queue in and do it immediately, it's time to finish up our Conjurer quest. We go out of the way a bit to fight off a big eyeball, turn in the level 30 quest, take down some big spiders, grab the chocobo companion quest of Camp Tranquil, unlock White Mage, take the level 35 quest, and finally head back towards Hawk Manor. Stopping in at Bent Branch, we convince our chocobo to learn how to fight and progress our next White Mage quest. It's almost time for me to do another split. It's been an hour and 20 something minutes. This is ridiculous. For Hawk Manor, just like in Copper Bell, I have to make sure I'm doing all the interactions as soon as possible. Starting things off with a small pull, the tank eventually learns to trust the sprout and starts attacking everything. No slip ups this time, the first boss is down in four minutes. I'm activating my burst face, the most powerful white mage in existence, and you know what? I'm gonna auto attack. We lose a bit of damage on final boss with my party turning away from the eye, but it's better than them getting petrified. Hawk Manor is finished in a much more reasonable 10 minutes and 52 seconds. We've made it halfway through 2.0 and around a fourth of the way through the entire run. You can't see it just yet gamers, maybe if I scroll down a bit. You may notice that towards the bottom of those splits you've got just something called Ayaba. I never realized that the song for Leviathan, they were saying Leviathan. I always just thought they were going, ah, uh, yup, ah, uh, yup, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Speedrun the longing, it only takes 9,600 hours. Does it actually, what the heck? What is the longing? A literal 400 days? What What could possibly make it take 400 days? Heading back over to Camp Tranquil, we turn in the last necessary white mage quest and unlock regen. While we don't need to do any more of these, if we can somehow get the level 45 quest completed, we'll get our only AoE attack, Holy, which could help for later dungeons. So for now, we grab the next quest and run off. Okay, this is the Brayflox unlock. The things we do for cheese. Brave locked unlocked, we queue in and take the chance while waiting to work on our white mage quests. The queue took long enough for us to finish the level 45 quest, so we grab our strongest healing spell, Cure 3. I wasn't a high enough level to grab the next one, so now we're just waiting for Brave Locks. Thankfully, it wasn't too long until we got in. If we queue up for Titan after this, and Titan is not an instant queue pop, I'm probably gonna go over to Crystal. After a bit of a close call, we reached the first boss in under two minutes. Too many hours of my life were spent on the Great Yellow Pelican for Solo. I can't look at this thing anymore. This is the worst. Get me out of this fight quick. Yeah, we didn't even see ad spawn. You do not see ad spawn in a normal party. I had to see it like two or three times. Ooh, I would love that. Am I maybe greeting a lot more than I should? Yeah, probably. But, you know. He's alive. And just under 13 minutes total, Brayflox is finished. We gotta speak with Brayflox again, so I probably should not have left. That's unlucky that I also didn't get the wine port aetherite. No! Heading back to the goblin and grabbing the wine port aetherite, we enjoy our hard earned feast and move on towards Titan. This time around, if the queue does not go fast, while we're sitting around here and waiting for the queue, I'm just gonna take my time and enjoy my hot pocket. Just two quests later, we're at the second trial of the run. Please excuse me, my dear tank, I have a hot pocket in my mouth. I can't. Uh, I can't focus on the video game. As the arena continued to shrink, one of our party members fell into the abyss below, and we have a close call with his Earth and Fury cast, but Titan goes down all the same. I never split. I never split, and nobody yelled at me, so it's not just my fault this time. We go over to a place, we pick up corpses, and we bring them to another place. In case you did not know, the current place that we are at is the first Echisterial Observatorium of Ethereal and Astrological Phenomena. And if you don't believe me, here you go. It's a very fun phrase. It is. It truly is. There's so many words that you just never get to say. Dicasterial Observatorium Phenomena? Come on. Xenos is correct, not Xenos. I say it Xenos because I'm defaulting to Disgaea 2's main villain, Xenon. That was actually a problem in my chemistry class when I was in college as well, because I would pronounce Xenon. Xenon, Xenon. So I, I mean, I see Xenos, and I'm like, yeah, that Xenon, but with a, with an Os. Now, I'm not tired just yet. I would say I'm actually doing pretty good. Surprisingly, seven hours into the run, I hadn't started to get tired yet, though there was still somewhere between nine and 13 hours left, depending on how well my run went. So if I was tired already, we would have other problems. An hour after Titan, we've hit our next dungeon, Stone Vigil. Okay, if this hits four minutes, then I'm going to leave this queue, log out, data center swap to Crystal, 
and go from there from then on. Since it was starting to get later in the day, it was time to hop data centers. Dynamis is notorious for long queue times, so we were planning on leaving at some point anyway. This was just the final push we needed to actually do it. Heading over to Crystal, we're stuck in a 10 player queue, so here's hoping there's enough people online to fill our dungeons and trials. Thankfully, our queues were so much shorter, I couldn't even finish teleporting to Coerthus. Stone Vigil was the first dungeon of the run that had me worried about deaths. Aside from my slip ups killing the party earlier, Stone Vigil was dangerous enough that we could end up losing people people even if I played well. With regen unlocked though, everything was pretty manageable and we make it to the first boss in 2 minutes. Shudo Yudo is the easiest part of this dungeon so it only takes a minute to bring it down. The next boss is Koshe. None of my party members were sprouts so no one died to the tornadoes and we're on to the final boss. You know what? Just for old times sake. And so with this goodbye down, Stone Vigil is finished in 13 minutes. The rescue cemented me as a medic. Load screen, it's a good chance to split. Thank you very much. I'm going to the burning wall, here we go. I hate the burning wall. This is such a labyrinth, dude. We're almost at the level 50 quests, which is kind of crazy to think about. In eight hours, we have done almost all of 2.0. It took me eight hours to prepare for Sestasha on solo only. Next on the list is Garuda. But right as I was finishing up on the Isles of Umbra, something odd was happening with my recording software. Speaking of having it recorded all the same, I need to check in on my storage space and check in on the recordings because golly gee it has been a while i went to split my recording like usual breaking it up into smaller pieces in case something goes wrong but it seemed to be acting strange i ignored it for now but then on the way towards garuda i tried to figure it out one more time and tragedy struck okay obs what the heck are we doing here? no 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 we're about to crash no, hold on. My recording software had crashed, the stream had stopped, I was in an all-out panic. Well, I suppose that's one way to split the stream. So, I mean, the timer's still going because it's live split, so there's no particular issues there. Is it gonna particularly work out in a fantastic way that makes it so, uh, makes it so that they don't take my speedrun? Who knows? Oh man, that's gonna suck if I can't submit this now. Losing around 30 seconds of the run's footage, I was filled with fear that this run would be disqualified. I'd put 8 hours into it already, and we'd likely be putting at least double that to finish it. I didn't know what I would do if it wasn't accepted. But there's no time to be worried. Chat did their best to cheer me up, and I kept moving forward. Even if it wasn't accepted, I still wanted a run I could be proud of. Thankfully, Garuda is an easy boss, and I had an amazing party to work with, so this fight was a cathartic punching bag to let out all of my stress. After a 2 minute battle, Garuda is finished. At the very least, to try and calm my worries from earlier, the live split timer had never stopped running, just my recording, so there was still a chance it would be accepted. No matter what, this run is being finished, whether it is a real run or not, I'm making it all the way to the end, and we are going to have my very first speed run all the same. No, I was really hoping you wouldn't see me, Mr. Frog. Why are your eyes open? You're asleep, right? What the heck are you- what? What is going on with that guy? All right, get me out of here. 3.5k of subs left to 10,000. Is that actually how that math works out? Yeah, we're at 6,500 subs. 3,500 more subs and we're at 10k. But I, I guess it might not have. What? <laughs> the chip skip. We're finally at a quest where we can use the animation skip we learned seven hours ago. By auto walking towards the target and using the emote from my chat bar, the animation never plays, but the game accepts it as a completed quest task. The only thing that's stuck in my head right now other than Yu-Gi-Oh theme songs is the Bakugan Battle Brawlers opening. Almost an hour after Garuda, we've made it to Shield Bro and the first major time save of the run. By taking off my armor before entering the Shield Bro fight, we lose as quickly as possible to exit the instance. This intentional death allows us to set the difficulty for the instance down to very easy, saving somewhere between two and five minutes overall. Oh, shield bro down, thank you. I forgot to split yet again. Now we're at the main scenario roulette dungeon. Castrum, Praetorium, and Porta Decuman. With how late it was getting, I was worried that this was going to be our slowest queue times yet, but those worries ended up being for nothing. Uh, and by magic of, oh, okay. Wow, instant Castrum pop is huge. I thought Castrum was going to be terrible to get into. I learned very recently that Waffle House is actually, without a joke, something that people will use as a scale to tell how bad a hurricane is. Because if it's bad enough that Waffle Houses close down, it's like, you need to leave. The famous Waffle House Index. Yeah, exactly. Main scenario roulette dungeons are incredibly long with a lot of forced cutscenes, so no matter how fast we go, it'll always feel slow. The first boss goes down in four minutes. What happens if you mix a red mage, white mage, black mage, and a blue mage into a blender? I would assume you would probably be arrested. 
for blending people up. Right before the final boss, we've got two minutes of cutscene to sit through before the fight begins. With Livia defeated, Castrum is finished in 15 minutes. And right after that, we're on to the last dungeon of 2.0, Praetorium, and locked out on my queue times yet again. Another instant, dude? Both scenario roulettes just instant. Oh, wow. Okay. While Castrum had one required cutscene at the end, Praetorium had one before and after every boss, so we'd be stuck here for a while. You ever notice that this boss has a thong? Oh? That magnetized hammer drop? That was 20 million gil. Here's the work order. No, no way. SSR golden guy is full. Oh my god. After almost 30 minutes in Praetorium, we're on to the final instance of 2.0. Portadecumana also happens to be the last four-man trial. After this, starting with Good King Mogglemog, trials will require eight people instead of four. It's not an instant pop? How did we instant pop both of the main scenarios, but not this one? I wonder if this character has more commends than I main. I mean, it's coming up on it pretty quick. I have 12 commendations. That's almost as many as my main. Hard casting for thunder is almost as cringe as a white mage not casting holy. Wait, 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 hold on. No, 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 no. There's a little bit of, just a tiny, maybe a, a little bit of a difference. Oh, what am I doing? Free cure or no cure? Very accurate. The fear in the tank size, he ran over to me like, please, da, 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 da. We knew, we knew. The deepest pits of the seven hells to the very pinnacle of the heavens, the world shall tremble! Ultima has such a tiny face. Oh yeah, compared to the, the whole body here. It's a face that's built to look down at you. 15 minutes later, Ultima is defeated and we have another solo instance to do. Just like Shield Bro, we go into the La Habrea fight with no armor and re-enter on very easy to speed things up. Receive the power to banish darkness. It's time. Thank you, mom. Super Saiyan Aerodynamis has arrived. I really want to wait for the bit in the cutscene where they go, ah, again, but I can't. I must go. There's so many cutscenes to skip. There's so many. Come on. We're more than halfway through the run. It's okay, now we have flying, so we're gonna go way, way faster. With 2.0 finished, we had the biggest speed boost we could get, light, but now that our transportation was sped up, we had a new problem. Since Shadowbringers update 5.3, we had to complete the hard mode fights for Ifrit, Garuda, and Titan, and we had to complete all three of the Crystal Tower Alliance raids. These weren't part of the MSQ, but they would prevent us from progressing the MSQ if we didn't complete them by 2.4 for the Primals and 2.54 for Crystal Tower. So we've got the Crystal Tower quest from Definitely Not Nero, and the start of the Primal Quests Ifrit to do alongside the MSQ. 11 hours into the run, I was starting to feel pretty tired, but I managed to find a source of motivation. The run I was basing my expected time on was just over 22 hours, and they had taken 14 hours to get past 2.0. I was currently ahead by 3 hours, so if things kept up, I might finish at 19 or even 18 hours, depending on how long my queues take. Is Man in Black Odin? Oh no, did I get the wrong quest? Don't tell me this. It's been so long since I lasted the Primal Quest that I started the Odin questline, which was promptly abandoned as soon as I realized I didn't have to do it. For this next quest, we have to escort Kupla Cop to the Bramble Patch. Along the path, you're stopped to fight five different enemies, so it's one of the longer open world quests in A Realm Reborn. Since this run, Bunford discovered a way to skip all of the enemy encounters, and I'll admit, I have no idea what's going on with it, but it'll be an amazing time save for any future runners. Check it out in the description. My first exposure to Moogle wasn't even in a Final Fantasy game. I think the first time I ever saw a Moogle was in Kingdom Hearts. There we go. Fantastic. With the escort quest finished, it's time for the first eight-man trial, Thorn March Hard. As expected, queue times immediately shot up, so while we wait to get into Thorn March, we head over to unlock Ifrit. And this was around the time where some of the folks that went to sleep earlier in the stream were waking up and starting their day. Right before reaching the Ifrit unlock, our queue pops, and it's time to fight some Moogles. I have a bad feeling this is gonna teleport me back to Shroud. I really hope it doesn't. That would be kind of kind of tragic, but that's uh, okay. I have died. That's uh, that's a time loss. Game. The Good King goes down in just over three minutes, and uh, how am I holding up? I'm holding up pretty good, surprisingly. Oh, it did teleport me back. No, dude. So at some point during our next queue time, we would have to trudge our way back to Little Alamigo all over again. I may be starting to feel a little bit tired, but not. Very. Oh, clock split. Thank you. I forgot to split. Back against the wall. Gotta give it your. Uh, 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 uh. This is the final stand. Uh, uh, uh. No, not that one. That's Bakugan Battle Brawlers. What the heck is it? That's it. Thank you, animal. Going fast makes me feel alive. My heart beats in half a draft. It's gonna be that. One. We're gonna do. We're, gonna, we're doing a cover of that. 
It's gonna be a masterpiece. There's your sneak peek. Uh, a good time, perhaps, to remind you of my favorite joke. What do, what do you call a werewolf that has a YouTube channel? A like and subscribe. Now it's starting to hit me. Starting to become a tired gamer. We're, we're in 2.2. We're actually surprisingly close to finishing this up. From my current quest, the sea rises, we were four quests away from Leviathan and 63 quests away from finishing the run. It was really starting to hit me that we were in the last quarter. Getting a time faster than 20 hours almost felt guaranteed. Leviathan unlocked, it's time to try and get to Ifrit again, but it didn't take very long for our queue to pop. If this teleports me back to that dock afterwards, I'm gonna be so upset. Ah, yep, ah, yep, ah, ah. You can pretend like they say Leviathan. I'm just telling you from right now, they say Ayaba, nothing you can do about it. And it did bring me back to the docks. I had been waiting for a while to find a good time to go and unlock Crystal Tower, but it didn't seem like there was going to be one, so we take a pit stop in Mordona to get the first alliance raid unlocked. The quest takes us over to Zaharak, so while we're here, we also unlock Ifrit. Now things get a bit messy. I still had to do Ifrit, Garuda, and Titan within the next 25 quests, or I'd be locked out from progressing the MSQ. So while running around in the open world, I was constantly queued for Ifrit to get in as soon as possible. This would end up being a problem if we reached the next trial before I fought Ifrit, but thankfully we get in without any issues. If this teleports me back to the Waking Sands, I'm gonna lose it. Ifrit finished in just over two minutes, we unlock Rima, head back to the Waking Sands to get the quest for Garuda, queue in for Rima, unlock Garuda, finish the Crystal Tower quests, add Garuda to the queue, unlock the Labyrinth of the Ancients, queue in for all three, and spend the rest of our time doing our White Mage quest to try and unlock Holy. A quick two minutes later, we're into our first Alliance raid. Labyrinth before both of the trials. Wow. How do I convince a 24-man raid to go fast? People move the dragon there so we have enough time to kill the skeletons, right? How long has it been since that actually mattered? I am Alliance C. I will see you later. Just sort of waiting around until folks get to their buttons. With Phlegathon down, we've got one of the three Alliance raids finished. This one teleported me back. Oh, great. Not even 30 seconds later, we get into Rama and can finally continue our MSQ. Rama's going down fast, gamers. No, I don't have any mana left. Well, I tried. The second attempt went much better, and Rama is down in eight minutes. We're once again teleported back to the MSQ, so we take the chance to get some progress in while waiting for Garuda. One quest later, we start our Garuda fight. This dancer is actually just jumping in and out of the tornadoes. What the? <laughs> what are they doing? Without any major issues like Rama, Garuda goes down in two minutes. Two out of the three side quest trials complete, there was only Titan left. Oh, he's using Sword Oath of all. My man still has Sword Oath on his bar from when they removed it. The OG Sword Oath that increases auto attack potency. That's beautiful. Before continuing the MSQ, we head over to unlock the next alliance raid, Circus Tower. I am allowed to use this run as a setup for a Heavensward run. That's kind of a sick idea. Maybe, maybe Aerodynamis does not need to live on as a slumbering gamer. Maybe he can have a purpose. While queuing in, we start Titan's side quest, the last primal we needed to fight outside of the MSQ. As I attune to the Aetherite near Ugamara Mines, we make it in for Circus Tower. I can't believe I got into Circus Tower. Why are the alliance raids going so fast, of all the things? This was honestly a bit shocking. It was past 2 a.m. and I needed 23 other people to get in, but it didn't even take three minutes. You have a wonderful time with your very cool cutscenes, you know, you those were skippable. Not like a Praetorium run or anything, it's not like we're forced to watch them, but okay. What do these even do? What do the, what do the fancy tower things do? They charge up floor pads. If you charge the floor pads, you can activate a shield around the boss that then turns her petrification attack back on her. But you never see the petrification attack now. She dies too fast. Okay. I'm so confident no one's going to notice. I'm going to hit the Medica 2 button real quick. I'll be right back. All right. Maybe I was a bit late, but that's fine. I made it. Think people might notice? No, 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 no. Amon's at 67%. It's like nothing happened. Amon set is the best bard set in the game. Counterpoint. Amon set is the best ranged physical set in the game. They're still in the rock, funny. You could just kind of see. They're just kind of... <laughs> Look at the stare, dude. They are upset with this boss. I mean, I have no clue how they didn't die after walking immediately back out of the rocks that I pulled them into, but it, it worked. Life is a circus, baby, and I am the clown. We have become Scylla. Oh, <laughs> this is 
now we got the good helmet. Two of the three alliance raids finished. The last one was our biggest chance of a time loss, but we'll get to that a bit later. World of Darkness and Titan Heart unlocked, we can finally get back to the MSQ. Continue, never mind. What? Party member withdrawn? No, okay. Well, didn't matter. Oh, wow. That's both healers. The Mountain Buster to finish them off? Okay. Beautiful. It's just tight, dude. Getting flashbacks to what I was progging Titan Unreal as a tiny little bank. Thank you. Tighten down, we finish the primal roadblock and do some MSQ for real this time while we wait for World of Darkness. Not long after that though, it was time to start our last alliance raid. This is the last extra thing we have to do. After this, it is just a straight run of main scenario. Well, I'm Alliance C and C is short for chomp, which means I get chomped and I go in the belt. That time loss I mentioned earlier would be right here at the first boss, Angra. Unlike the other alliance raids up to now, Angra had strong enough mechanics that if people weren't paying attention, we could have a full wipe, slowly watching 24 people die and restarting from the beginning. Thankfully though, everything went smoothly and Angra went down on the first try. From here, there wasn't anything else to be afraid of, we just had to finish things off. All right, five-headed dragon, a long time ago, I brought you over to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament before I really understood what Yu-Gi-Oh cards work and it turns out that you were a fake card they had to take it out of my out of my card deck i had nothing left i had nothing left to go on i had to get card packs right then and there so i could make a new Yu-Gi-Oh deck in the middle of the tournament they're frozen i'm not getting frozen see you later they survived that stack with three people and they are i think they were all dps i play pot of greed which allows me to draw two cards from my deck and with that, I draw Pot of Greed. <laughs> I activate it to draw two cards from my deck. Would you look at this, Yugi? Okay, so yeah, I was starting to lose it. But I mean, it was 3 a.m., there's 14 hours of speed focus gameplay. Can you blame me? No. It's not my fault, okay? I'm not used to having such a small character bottle with the Lollafell. This is a very new experience. Go, 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 go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Get me in. Put me in. Put me in, boss. I wanna go. Okay. okay. Unknown acquired. We did it. I I was here for two seconds. If I have to heal a single time, that's that's the end. I kinda wanna do the LP. I mean, they're not gonna use it, right? Average party finder healer? Come on, you can't say that. I'm way worse than that. If they absolutely have to, they can push the heal buttons. I, on the other hand, simply cannot. I'm doing it. <laughs> they tried to rescue me out of it. Oh, that was so worth it. Okay, Crystal Tower is over. Just the MSQ to the end now. Getting back to the MSQ, there's 46 quests between us and the end of the run. How much caffeine have I ingested so far? None. I'm mostly just going off of sheer force of will. Because I must. Because I said that I will, and so I must. It's time to hunt down heretics, the thing that I was always made for. Why do you think I have this mustache? It's specifically for the heretic hunt. Brave new companions complete. We're on to patch 2.4, Snowcloak, and Shiva. We spent some time getting lost in Kawerthus. You've got to be joking. Where the heck is this thing? And shortly after, Snowcloak is unlocked. While I wait... Oh, I was going to say while I wait for the queue time, I was going to do a little bit of exercise. Get the blood flowing. My worst nightmare, the hardest dungeon in the entire run, the one thing that could bring this whole thing to an end. Soft calming music. Jokes aside, Snowcloak is actually one of the easier dungeons in the run, so there's not much to say about it. With Snowcloak finished, we're on to Shiva. For the first time, we had nothing to do during our queue, and now, almost 5am, we just had to sit around and wait. We're in. We've done it. Whoa. Thankfully, our summoner managed to revive a healer, and we cleared anyway. Just want to know what we did to deserve that? Yeah, that's what I'm feeling, man. Dreams of Ice is done. Four quests until Keeper. Took you a while to realize eating pate isn't a very normal American thing. The only time I've ever experienced pate is when I'm feeding it to my cats. Okay, Keeper of the Lake unlocked. Instant cue for Keeper. That's what I'm talking about. Check it up on Mr. Gamer. How am I holding up? I'm very tired. Oh, Jesus. No, I knew I was gonna, I knew I was gonna save him easy peasy. No, I wasn't worried. 
With Keeper of the Lake done, we finished all the dungeons in our own report. That's a big one. That's a big victory. Get me the heck out of here. Keeper of the Lake done. Three more splits and then I have finally completed my very first ever speed run. Now there's just one trial, a solo instance, and 20 quests between us and the end. You do below 17 hours, 24 minutes, I'll be 10th place. Will I actually? Forget 19 hours, so close to the end, it was getting easier to guess what my final time would be, and so I had a new goal. Oh, is it not 1724? Is it 1754? Oh, thank goodness, I have so much more time. I wanted to be in the top 10, no matter what it took. The new time to beat, right here in the final moments, was 17 hours and 54 minutes. Two minutes after the new goal was set, the chrysalis was unlocked. <laughs> And in five minutes, we're queued in and ready to start the fight. This is the last instance. This is the last time I have to care about queues. And then this character, the speedrun, is just a solo instance and running in circles, clicking quests. Am I going to switch to samurai for solo duties? I cannot. Samurai is not a legal class. I have to do a Realm Reborn available class. There's one quest after this, there's 16 quests in the segment after this, so 17 quests and then I'm done. <laughs> Chrysalis finished, no more cues, now it was all on me. Steps of faith, put me in. Unlike previous solo instances, losing to Steps of Faith would likely be a time loss, as it takes 3 minutes before the duty properly starts and you're able to die, so we just complete it normally. That's the final split. Right before, before the dawn. Now it was a victory lap. We just had to turn in these last few quests as fast as possible. Before the dawn, dude, we're there. And so, with Before the Dawn turned in, we get a final time of 17 hours, 29 minutes, and 21 seconds. Exhausted, and my internet killing the stream, it was time to rest. And around a week later, I got some incredible news. Despite my crash and some other recording issues that came up later, the run was accepted, and we had gotten 10th place. A quick thank you to Bunper and Hab for all the help they gave me on my first run, and to everyone that came to chat during the stream. I wouldn't have been able to survive that 18-hour marathon without you, so thank you once again for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.